The desktop version, unlike the online version, is installed on your Windows computer and does not require an internet connection to run the software. However, you will need an internet connection to obtain the software so you can download it to your computer, or to a thumb drive so that you can install it onto another computer. If you don't already have our latest version, please visit our website at tbgtom.com. From there, click on the icon for the Crypt Keeper. Then click on the icon to download the desktop version. There you will find a red button named Download on the page that you can click to get the latest version. When that finishes downloading to your computer, please save this installation routine to a thumb drive or other media so that you can install it again if you experience a system crash, or upgrade your computer, or any other reason that you might need to reinstall this software. This software can run on Windows 7, 8, 10, or 11 computers, and unless Microsoft makes drastic changes with future versions it should run just fine on all future versions of Windows as well. There might be some additional requirements for older versions of Windows so please be sure to read the bottom of our download page on our website to ensure that you follow all the instructions in case you have to perform extra steps to get the software to run on your computer. Once the software is successfully installed on your computer you should see an icon for the software on your desktop. Open the software and let's dig in. You'll see the main application window. Notice in the bottom left corner it tells you how many days left you have in trial mode. During this trial period you can import all your existing data to experiment with the software, create maps and reports, and fully use the software without limitations. When the 30 days expires the software will lock and you'll have to register the software for continued usage. When you're ready to do that, click on the help button in the menu bar of the application and choose the option named register the software. If you already purchased your key code you would input your unlock information here and click on the button named register. But if you need your registration information click on the hyperlink in the bottom left corner of that pop-up window to open your browser to the desktop version web page and then click on the button named purchase. It will guide you through creating an invoice so you can mail a paper check for payment. If you just want to see what this software can do by using our demo data, click on the help button from the toolbar. Then click on the option, Load Demo Data. Anytime you perform a task that could be destructive, you are asked if you want to make a backup of any existing data. This is a personal choice, and completely optional. In this case I'm going to say yes, just so you can see what would happen. It then asks me where I want to store this backup file. You can point to a folder on your computer, or you can point to a thumb drive that you might have inserted in your computer. For this I'll just save to my downloads folder. It should be pretty quick, unless you have a lot of images, which may take just a bit longer than normal. Now that the backup is complete it asks if you are sure you want to overwrite your data with the demo data. In this case I am sure so I will answer yes. After the data is inserted it will provide you a message that the application needs to close. Just reopen the application from the desktop icon. You'll notice that the trial starts over at this point. So if you had only one day left in your trial and you did this option you could start your trial over again. Before you start inputting or importing data, you may want to first configure your account. Let's start with any custom data fields you may want to use. To see what data fields are already available, click on the database button from the menu bar, then choose the option to input new records. Take a look around the page and if you see that your data has data fields that aren't already listed here you can add new ones. To do this, click on the Settings button from the menu bar. Then choose the option to define custom fields. You'll see that there are 8 already existing fields that you can rename to fit your needs. And if you need you can add as many additional custom data fields in the grid on the right hand side. Input a field name and choose a data type. A text type is an alphanumeric value with a max data length of 255 characters. A number type is an integer value with no decimal places. An amount type is any monetary value with two decimal places. A date type is any valid date between 1753 and 2999. When you're all done creating and assigning custom field names, click on the Save button. Please note once you create custom fields you cannot remove them. If you made a mistake and need to remove a custom data field, contact us for help. The software can support multiple cemeteries. You may want to configure these before you start inputting or importing data. To do this, click on the settings icon from the menu bar. 
Then choose the cemetery manager option. By default, you already have a cemetery created. You can rename this to your needs and provide contact information in the spaces provided. This contact information could be used on invoices or deeds later on, so filling this in could be important. Assign a numeric sort order to determine how these will appear in drop-down boxes. The lower the number, the higher it will appear to the top of the drop-down choices. When you're finished making changes, click on the file menu and then the save option. The software can also support multiple grave types, the software calls these lot types. To edit these, click on the settings menu and choose the option for lot type manager. You can see we have a generic grave already set up for you. Make changes and add new grave types as your organization needs. Be sure to set the sort order just like you did for the cemetery manager so dropdowns are displayed correctly. Then when you're finished making changes, click on the file menu and choose the save option. If you didn't want to experiment with the software with the demo data, you could just start from scratch with inputting new records. Or, you could upload a tab delimited text file of your existing records. Please note that your data file should only be for one cemetery and one lot type. If you have mingled data in one file, please first break that file up into different smaller files so the import will assign data properly. If you intend to have more than one cemetery and more than one lot type, please jump back to the cemetery manager and lot type manager sections of this video and then come back to this point of the video. Additionally, if you intend to use custom data fields you should do that before importing data. Let's examine how to upload your data. You could have an Excel spreadsheet full of information. This is the most common that I've seen with clients so far. With your spreadsheet open, you need to save it as a tab delimited text file. After that's converted, open the software. Click on the help button from the menu bar. Then choose import from tab delimited text file. It will ask if you want to make a backup first. This is up to you. I'm going to say no on this since I said yes to it earlier in this video so you already see how that works. Be sure that the two drop-downs at the top of this pop-up are pointing to the cemetery and lot type to be used for this import, then click on the button named Locate Import File. Locate and open your data file. Match up the column names from your file to the drop-down boxes of available data fields in the software. After you have all the columns mapped, click on the button at the bottom of the pop-up named, Use this information and continue with import. You'll be asked if you want to erase all data before importing. If you say yes, all data is first removed from the database. If you say no, the new data is appended to the existing data. The software will then need to close, and you can reopen from the desktop icon. If you want to get started with inputting new data, click on the database icon from the menu bar and choose the option to input new records. You can see the two drop-downs at the top of the page for cemetery and lot type. These are covered earlier in the video, so if you haven't already configured these, please jump back and perform those tasks and then come back here. You'll also notice in the lower left corner of the window the custom field names. If you need additional field names, please jump back in the video on how to create custom data fields and then come back here. To get started, each cemetery record can be assigned a section, lot, and grave identifier. Your organization may call these something else, and if that's the case you can rename these under the custom data fields feature. You do not have to use all three of these, and none of these are a requirement for saving a data record, but if you intend to use our mapping feature these will be very important data elements. I'm going to input some data for this record so you can get an idea what it would look like. When you get to the purchaser section, you need to choose from the drop-down to either create a new purchaser record, or select one that you created previously. When you get to the yellow fields, these are locked in case you want to generate an invoice, which we'll go over later, but you can override this by pressing F7 on your keyboard for manual data input. After pressing F7, the yellow fields turn white and you can freely input. Notice that there are drop-downs on the custom fields. This means you can choose from data from already inputted information so you don't have to retype things all the time. When you're all done inputting, just click the file menu and choose the save option. Once a data record is saved you have a new menu option you can use. Click on the file menu, then choose the option to view images for this record. If any images are already loaded they will be displayed here, 
Otherwise you can add a new image by clicking on the file menu and then the load new image option. The image is displayed in the list. You can add as many images as you want to this data record, but they must all be in JPG format. I know a lot of clients want to upload a PDF file, but you would need to convert that to a JPG file if you want to upload it to this software. To see a larger version of the image, just double click the image in the pop-up window and it will show you the full size version. Please note that files are automatically resized when they are uploaded into the software to keep space optimized. If the image needs to be rotated you can do that with the file and rotate menus. You can also rename and remove images using the file menu here. When you're done with images just close the pop-up. There are other things you can do with a saved record. Let's click on the billing menu and see what's in there. You can create an invoice for this record by choosing the option for create or view invoice for this record. Before using this feature you may want to review the section of this video on setting up your invoice payment calculation methods later in this video, but I'll give a rundown of the feature here first. You assign all the invoice information and then click on the file and save menus. Now that the invoice is saved you can print it using the file and print menus. Notice that the cemetery information prints in the top left of the invoice. So if you didn't provide this from the earlier section of this video it will appear empty as illustrated here. You can then deliver this invoice to your customer. We'll go over collecting payments later in this video. You can also generate a deed from this page. But before you can do that you must configure your deed template. Click on the settings icon from the menu bar and choose the option for deed template. There is a generic deed template provided and it uses what we call keywords, which are displayed on the right side of the window. These must be in all caps and encased in braces, not parentheses. Edit the template as you see fit and then click on the save button. Now you can click on the billing menu from your data record and go in to generate a deed. Choose the template that you want to use, you can have more than one, and click the select button. Your deed is exported to a PDF using the data from your data record and the format of the deed template that you designed. You can then print this or email it as needed. Another way you can input new records is via the Purchasers Manager. To get here, click on the database icon from the menu bar and choose the option for Purchasers Manager. You may see already existing purchasers, depending on the records you inputted or imported. You can edit any purchaser information on this page and then click on the file and save menus to save those changes. If you want to add cemetery records for a purchaser, Double-click your mouse on the ID in the yellow column next to the purchaser that you want to work with. A window will open that shows any already existing cemetery records. You can just type over this information or add new information. And when you're all done, click on the file and save menus. If you make a mistake and populate a value in the cemetery or lot type dropdowns and want to erase that, be in that cell and then press the Ctrl X keys on your keyboard. From the main purchaser's manager page, if you find that you've inputted the same purchaser more than once, you can use the option to merge purchaser records. This will only work if all the date for the purchaser records is identical. First and last name and contact information would need to be all identical to successfully merge. Click on the file and merge menus to perform this task. You can also remove a purchaser from the list. To do this, move the cursor to the ID of the purchaser you want to remove. Then click on the file and remove menus. Please note you can only remove a purchaser if there are no data records tied to the purchaser. Now that you have records in your database, let's search your data. Click on the database icon from the menu bar and choose the option to search records. If you wanted, you could return all of your data records at once using the button named list all records. It will warn you that doing this may take a while if you have many thousands of records, so choose accordingly. I'm going to select yes. You can see that all of my records are now displayed and on the left side are blue numbers that indicate the record identifier in the database. Clicking on one of these blue numbers opens that data record. This shows you all the contents for the data record, including any images that you uploaded. You can navigate to prior or next records, sorted by grave location, using the left, or right, arrow keys on your keyboard. Alternatively, you could use the menu named record at the top of the page and choose the option to navigate to a prior or next record. Under this same menu you might notice that you can also jump to this grave on the map. 
This requires that you already have a map created and have a grave designated on that map with the same grave identifiers matching to this record. We'll get to mapping later in this video. If you want to edit this record, click on the menu to edit. You are brought into the data input page where you can then make further edits to the record, or upload images, or create an invoice or create a deed, which was all explained earlier in this video, under the section for inputting new records. Let's say you want a more detailed search of your records. You can click on the database icon from the menu bar and choose the option to search records. Then you can use one of the search methods at the top right of the window. The first option is to search by keywords. Type in one or more keywords in the box and then check the boxes of the data fields that you want to search and then click on the search button. Let's say I want to search for any record with the name Smith. I would type Smith in the search box and click the search button. Now any record with that word comes up. But maybe I only want records where the purchaser is named Smith. I would uncheck all the boxes except for search purchaser name, then click the search button. Now my results are only for those with Smith as the purchaser. But maybe I only want records where Smith is the name of the interred. I would check the appropriate filter box and click the search button again. Now my results are further filtered. The second search method is by grave location. These are three boxes just below the keywords box. Be sure the keywords box is empty when performing this search. Type a value in one or more of the three grave identifiers, which are section, lot and grave. I'm going to put the letter A in the first search box, so that all records with a section of A come up. Then I'm going to click the search button. Now I'm going to further filter my results by putting a 2 in the lot box, then click search again. My results are further filtered. You can provide all three values if you know them to quickly jump to the record you want. The third search method is by date. You can input a whole or partial date. When using this option, be sure all the boxes above this are empty, and be sure to check at least one of the date checkboxes on the right side of the search filters. DOB is date of birth, DOD is date of death, DOI is date of interment, and DOP is date of purchase. Let's say I want to retrieve any record where the interred's birth year is 1966. I would input 1966 in the year portion of the date values and check only the box for search DOB, then click the search button. Any record with a birth year of 1966 comes up. Feel free to experiment with different search techniques and if you have questions just let us know. If you want you can use our billing features of the software. Before doing so you may want to configure your invoice payment options. To do this, click on the database icon from the menu bar. Then choose the accounts receivable manager. You'll see a drop down at the top. This lists only purchasers that have already existing invoices in your database. So if this is empty, you haven't created any invoices yet. But if it has values, select a purchaser to review their invoices. The grid at the bottom will then populate with invoice and payment activity for this purchaser. This will display in the Activity tab. Next to the Activity tab is the Process Payments tab. Here you would input payments as they come in. And the third tab is the Global Settings tab. Click here to open that tab. Choose which payment method type you want to use for your organization. Fixed Monthly Payments or Credit Card Type Interest Collection. If you choose the latter, input all your interest information in the spaces provided. Once you've made all your selections be sure to click on the Save button. Once an invoice is generated or you save this information, you cannot switch payment method types. So if you've made a mistake and need to undo this, contact us for help. When your customer sends in a payment, choose them from the drop-down and click on the Process Payments tab. Find the invoice they are paying and input the payment amount in the Payment Received green column. Be sure to edit the date received if you need to and then click on the button named Apply Payment. Then you can go back to the Activity tab to see the history for this purchaser has been updated. If you want to review the original invoice, you can double-click on the invoice from the Activity grid and it will open up that database record. Then you can click on the Billing menu and then on the Create or View Invoice menu option. Then you can use the file and print menus. You can also generate statements. To do this, you can click on the reports icon from the menu bar. Click on the menu named, Standard. Then choose the option for statements. The statements are produced to a PDF file which you can then print. 
Note that this pulls from your cemetery manager so you may need to input your cemetery contact information for each cemetery for this to appear correctly. Since we're looking at reports, let's see what is available for you. Click on the reports icon from the menu bar. You'll see two menu options, standard and advanced. Under the standard menu, you'll find reports we've built for you. These are very generic and provide just basic information. Feel free to run any of them. The last report under the standard menu populates all of your data columns of data into the grid. You can then assign sort orders for the data and add conditions and filters if you like. But for now, just click on the button named Produce Report. You'll see that all the data is displayed in web style format. From here you can directly print or export this data to Excel using the print menu. Click on the reports icon again and choose the standard menu and the last menu option again. This time we're going to sort the report by purchaser and then by interred. To do this, scroll down the grid until you find the purchaser last name. In the sort order column assign a value of 1. Then next to the purchaser first name assign a value of 2. Next to the interred last name assign a sort order value of 3 and next to the interred first name assign a sort order value of 4. Before you do anything else, click on the advanced menu. Then click on the option to save current report parameters. It will ask you to save a file and you must give it a name. Make it descriptive so you know what you're looking for when you come back to use it again. After that is saved, click on the button to produce the report. You can see all the data is now sorted the way you selected. Go back into the reports icon from the menu. Reload the report by choosing the advanced menu and then load previously saved report. Click on the report name and then open. Let's say you only want records where there is a purchaser name. Go to the purchaser last name row and in the condition choose the greater than symbol. Since you want any purchaser that isn't empty, you can just leave the filter blank. Click on advanced and save report again and overwrite this report. Then click on the button to produce the report. Now your report is trimmed down. You can experiment with different conditions and filters to see what works for you, and if you need help you can contact us. If you want to do a range filter then you would add the column twice to the report and add different conditions to each column. It will only show one of the columns on the report. With all that covered, you're now ready to look at the mapping feature. Click on the map icon from the menu bar, then choose edit map. You're started out with a big green canvas of 50 columns and 50 rows. You can make this canvas smaller or larger as needed by clicking on the Map Menu and Dimensions option. Edit the number of rows and columns you might need for your map and then save the dimensions. You can always edit this later to make the canvas bigger if needed, so don't worry. But if you make the dimension smaller after you've already created a map you risk losing portions of your map, so use caution. Under the Map Menu, you can change cemeteries. This is only valid if you created more than one cemetery in the Cemetery Manager, discussed earlier in the video. You can add or remove rows or columns from this menu also, but we'll discuss that in a bit. To start creating your map, move your cell cursor to where you want to start editing. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move around or you can click into cells with your mouse. Let's look at the Assign menu. The first option is to set a cell to Unused. This colors the cell green, just like your empty canvas. If you've changed the cell to something other than green and want to return it to green, select this option, or press F3 on your keyboard. If you want to make the active cell a grave, you can choose the Assign menu and then the second option to assign as grave. This colors the cell white, indicating that it is a grave location. From here you can type your grave identifiers into the space. For example, if this is section A, Lot 1, and Grave 1, you would type A, comma, 1, comma, 1, with no spaces before or after the commas. Move to another cell on the map and choose the Assign menu and then choose the third option to assign a road or path. This colors the cell black. You can also use the F5 key for this. You can also assign more than one cell at a time by highlighting all the cells in the canvas, like in a spreadsheet, and then do the assignment. This can make it easier to make assignments. Instead of assigning each grave one at a time, you could assign entire lots of graves at one time. For example, if your lot is a configuration of four rows of graves and two columns of graves, you could edit the parameters on the left side of the map canvas. Input the section and lot values. 
Then in the grave configuration, put in the, the values that comprise the lot. In my example, the graves are numbered 1 through 8. Then move to the canvas and set the cursor at the starting cell position. Using the assign menu, choose the fourth option to assign using the grave identifiers, or press F9. You just created a grouping of graves at one time. Notice that the lot number is then incremented by one value. Now you can just move to another area of the map and press F9 again to assign the next grouping of graves. Repeat as needed. You can change the grave configuration grid using the assign menu and choosing the last option. Then you can change the number of rows and columns in your lot. A third option to generate graves on your map is to check the OR box. Then input the starting section, lot, and grave values. For example, I might want to start with section B, lot 1, and grave 1. I move my cursor to my canvas to the cell I want to start with and press F9 on my keyboard. The grave value is automatically incremented to the next value so you just move to another cell and press F9 again, and repeat as needed. You can also change the zoom of your map using the zoom menu. You can change it to small, or large. This doesn't keep it that way, but can come in handy for seeing longer grave identifiers. Now let's say you want to insert a column in your canvas. Place your cell cursor in the column that you want to start the insertion. Then click on the map menu and choose insert column. Everything is shifted to the right, the canvas is widened by one column, and your new column exists at the point of your cursor. You can undo this by using column remove. This is the same process for rows. When you're all done editing your map you can just close the window, it will automatically save. You can also export this map if you wanted to upload it to your online version account, if applicable. Now that you have your map created, you can view it by clicking on the map icon from the menu bar, and then view map. If there are corresponding data records that link up to your map, the graves will be colored accordingly. Any grave with no corresponding record in the database will remain white. Any grave with either a name inputted for purchaser or interred, but no purchase date and no date of interment, will be colored yellow. Any grave with a purchase date, but no date of interment, will be colored blue. Any grave with a date of interment will be colored red. There is another color option, purple, but that is when you are searching for a grave. For example, you could go to your search page and pull up a record that you know should exist on the map. With the database record visible, click on the record menu and choose the option to show this record on the map. The map is displayed and the grave is colored purple and blinks, and the zoom level is set to large. You can change the zoom level to get a better feel for the location on the map. While viewing the map, you can jump directly to a cemetery record by clicking on a grave in the map. This populates the information in a grid at the top of the window. Double click on the name in that grid and you will directly open that database record. That pretty much covers all the features of the software, but if you still have questions after all this then just let us know.